welcome back. So this is the last video in this little series on the Cincinnati mill. So let's get straight to it. What I'm doing here is just making a new gasket for the transmission, the downfeed transmission cover plate. And I'm just going to show today a few little bits of assembly and we'll do a test run of the mill and look at setup. That's it. Enjoy. Unfortunately, the sound didn't take for this one. Anyway, what these are, are dished aluminum discs. I just parted them off in the lathe and then dished them by forcing a steel ball into them while holding them in a tube. And what I'm doing here is just mashing them into these openings. And they're just gaskets. They just stop oil coming out of the bushings that are in those locations. And then they get hidden behind the uh, speed cover plate. So very simple and they seem to have worked very well. Plus it means I got to hammer something in place, which is very important. Welcome back. So where does that leave us? I can't remember what I filmed. Some stuff around assembly. What I didn't film was tramming the mill in and some of the final assembly of the bits and pieces because uh, it's all very straightforward. Tramming a mill, there's, um, I've counted them, there's 1,002,374 uh, videos on YouTube already and I've watched every single one of them and they're all excellent. So I didn't feel a need to particularly go through that process again. What I will mention though, again, is this tramming ring that I purchased from DeBolt Tool. And I'll put a link about that in the comments. This um, just projects the plane of the surface of the table to a continuous ring to make, to make tramming very easy. Another tool you can use is well, you don't need any special tools other than a test indicator because you can just touch off on the surface and just be careful how you sweep around. Um, but a very flat and parallel ring like this makes uh, tramming exceptionally easy. There is also these kind of dual indicators. Um, this one's by Edge Technology. 
There's a company called Stupid Simple Tools that make one as well. And um, you can make your own very easily. And again, you only really need one. But tools like this make tramming so very simple that it encourages you or encourages me to do it on a frequent basis and keep the machine as true and straight and level as it can be. Of these two tools, I like this one best because I can use a very sensitive test indicator with very good resolution um, and it's just easier to read. Even, even with a device like this, you're all constantly swinging the faces away from you. So I may sell this because I'm not, I don't really need it anymore or give it away. Maybe I'll give it to someone as a gift. Um, anyway, a couple more comments on tramming in a Cincinnati Toolmaster specifically is uh, tramming it in the X direction is very simple because you do have the worm gear inside to tilt the head. Tramming it in the Y direction, not so easy. Unlike a Bridgeport and Bridgeport clones, there is no nod adjustment on this mill. And if you look at the original manual for it, they basically say if the nod is out, then you have to rescrape the head. Um, which is quite extreme. The nod was out on this mill and what I've done is shimmed it. Um, and I told someone I was going to do that and I got lambasted for, for, for the suggestion, but you know what? I don't care. Um, I've got it now within about five tenths, which is uh, pretty good. And with uh, a little more effort, I can get it better than that. Now the theory is that having uh, a shim under here is, you know, going to make it less rigid, but I doubt if that's going to really show up in practical terms. Um, I, I, I don't know that I really actually need to scrape anything yet. At some point in the future, I'm going to pull the ram off, pull the turret off and check all of the surfaces. It's just as likely that there's gunge or crap or something in there that's, that's throwing the nod off. So uh, I know this is clean here because I had all this apart, so that's in good shape. But right now I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to start using the machine and see how it goes. So anyway, although I didn't show you tramming it in, which was very easy, uh, I will at least give you a close-up of the sweep. So that's marvellous. So last thing to do is uh, put the belt back on. I took the timing belt off just to make it easy to sweep the spindle around. So I'm going to put that back on and we will put a uh, end mill in here or some sort of cutting tool and uh, run it and see how it is. Before we go any further, uh, we'll just we'll just fire the mill up without anything uh, and just uh, see how how it is and what wobble there is and how noisy it is and so on. But before we do that, we'll take this test indicator out. <laughs> before we go, before we do anything else, let's get the test indicator out of there.
Ready? This is going to throw oil. It's a it's a toolmaster thing. Well, this is a this is a shed shirt, so we're okay. Right, we're on lowest speed. Jolly good. Everything's unlocked. Okay. Forgot to plug it in. Oh, that's just lovely. Right, well, this is a very quick and crude test and a very poorly set up part, but I'm not going to do anything heavy or drastic I just want to uh, put the machine under a little bit of load and just try a cut with something so this is a very nice face mill that Jim of Jim's workshop gave me and never used it before and I've got the machine on the lowest speed and I'm just gonna touch off on the top of this and then cut some material and just See how it goes. Well, that went just fine, honestly. Um, I had no idea what the condition of the inserts is, and certainly nothing has been optimized. Um, got some chatter going on there a few times, which is interesting how the worst of it was before the face mill was fully loaded. And once it was fully loaded, it settled down. But um, that's Pretty good start, isn't it? No issues up in the uh, head, so. Well, there you go. That basically draws this phase of the Cincinnati project to a close. It's back operational again. Now, there's a few jobs to do yet. I do have to recoil the spring for the hand wheel, that's slightly too low intention. Um, that's a pretty simple job. 
And over time, there will be things to fix, like take the turret off and the RAM out and just check things in there. I have to install two more axes on the DRO. And once I've done that, I'll put out a video about that. Uh, and I have to reinstall the power feed on the X axis. The homemade bracket that somebody made for that in the past is pretty shoddy and it's pretty poorly set up. Um, it's some off brand uh, or long since defunct company um, that made the power feed for this, but it's functional, it works. So I'm just going to redo the mounting bracket and get it aligned properly uh, and continue to use it, spruce that up. But in the meantime, I'm just going to manually feed the table. Um, so there's a couple of jobs to do, but, but nothing too serious. Um, but right now I want to get back to making model engines. And so the next video that comes out will be the start of the build of a model engineer beam engine. Uh, very excited about doing that. I've had the castings from Reeves for a couple of years, I think, while I went through some other projects, and uh, now it's time to make a start. So hope that you've enjoyed this series of videos and this look around the Cincinnati. There's, there's not many of them on YouTube, so uh, it, was, it was nice to be able to provide some new content that, that isn't available or hasn't been available even though a lot of the techniques are, you know, well established in terms of setting up any email. But hope you enjoyed it. I really hope you'll come back for the beam engine build and follow along with that. Um, quick reminder, if, uh, if you would like a channel sticker, please just send me an email. I'll put my email address up here and uh, I will mail one off to you free of charge wherever you are in the world. You don't have to have a channel. You, you can just have a sticker, no problem at all. And I am currently designing some new stickers, which will be slightly more interesting than the old one. So that's it. Wherever you are in the world, be safe and well. All the best to you. May your surface finishes be chatter free, not like that, and your dimensions intolerance. Be seeing you.